the only podcast that makes sure to stay hydrated. This is Bars. Hey, welcome to Bombers. I am Bomber number five, Anthony, a.k.a. Dag. I have with me Bomber number three, Zyber, a.k.a. Zyber. Here I am. Now, Zyber, I have a question about our opening line that we just heard. Yeah. The only podcast that makes sure to stay hydrated. So that's us staying hydrated, or are we going to also be the kind of proper people that make sure that our audience is staying hydrated? How much do I ca- Wait. care? You think we actually care about our audience? Well, then I will drink this water, and uh, the audience can do chug. whatever they want. Go chug the salt water or something. There we go. go You'll totally stay hydrated then. Go, go chug salt, you plebes. Something like that. I don't know. I'll drink some Mountain Dew. Speaking of salt, ah. no uh, bomber number one today. He chugged seawater on Zyber's recommendation, and, uh, well, he's hydrated. Your human bodies are just so pathetic. <laughs> Foolish, weak human mortals. Careful, you'll uh, you'll turn into DJ there. Oh, I definitely don't want that to happen. <laughs> no, no. One DJ is too much already. Um, should be a fun episode. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it should be fun, because all of our episodes are fun. Yeah, every single one. So might as well get to the funnest part of the show. Everyone's favorite? The bombastic news. Oh yeah. The news that is bombastic. <laughs> I love that that became you know, we We still have a website, you know. What? I thought we got rid of that. No, not yet. I mean people keep coming with pitchforks and torches, but like I really like this website. This is bombers.com's best website ever. This is Bombers.com. Great website. Best website. The bestest of the, the of the Bombers of this is. Um, dot com. This, of the dot com bubble. This is Bombers bubble. Yep. Speaking of this. No is, way that this bubble will burst. No way. And, you know, it helps to put the S on the end of Bombers whenever you try to go to this is Bombers.com because there's more than <laughs> one Bombers. I really hope that no one takes this as Bomber.com. I, I've given them the idea now, haven't I? Uh, I guess so. Well, they would have to listen to this, and what is the likelihood of that? Anyway, yeah, so we have a website that includes a lot of information about us, including our Discord, uh-huh. our podcast, Whoa, we have a our podcast? email. Oh, we have an we email? Have email. <laughs> our Twitch, where you can watch us stream video games like every Thursday after we record our episodes, we will do a community night. The this past Thursday of this of you listening to this, I guess we are probably gonna be playing Jackbox. Maybe we'll find out. You you you'll, you'll already know listening to this. You already know. In fact, tell, tell us if yeah, we tell are. us what we played. <laughs> did did we end up playing just uh, more power washing simulator? That'd be fine with me. I could do that. Um. Also included in our website is our Patreon, <gasps> where you can give us money to better our entertainment factors, it, entertainment value. Such entertainment. It's very much. Very entertain. Shout outs to our current friends of the show, Haley, Aaron, Minted Peas, and Reaper, and our best friends of the show, Anne and Rob. Thank you so much for giving us money. And an additional shout out to Himaru for... Uh successfully answering last week's quiz that is correct zyber has 76 years of it knowledge now it's pretty crazy here's the challenge for this week on this is bombers.com can you tell me the name of the scale that we are rated on i'm pretty sure we're rated on every scale well yes but there's a specific reference somewhere on the website about a scale what is the scale we're gonna start putting like hidden bombs all over the website. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, st- I'm really thinking about doing like website scavenger hunts type stuff in the future. And what will you win? Satisfaction. More 
More pats on the back. All right, everybody's favorite. And that is bombastic news. What other newsworthy things can we talk about? Uh, you want to talk about some games that are coming out this next week? Because there's actually some of them happening for once. Not really. Uh, not really. I mean, nothing to get super excited about, but there are games coming out. So that's more than we could say for recent weeks. I need to not buy any games for the foreseeable future. This March was it, terrible for me. But also, it was great for you. Terrible, but great. Like Galadriel. Sure. <laughs> so... Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, April 5th, tomorrow from you listening, not, not us, Cyber. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, April 5th, two games are coming out that I figured were at least worth mentioning. The first is Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, coming to PlayStation 4, 5, all of the Xboxes that are currently relevant, Switch, and PC. This is the Lego Star Wars game that allows you to play all nine Star Wars movie things, but in Lego style. So they so they had, you know, obviously the original trilogy and prequel trilogy, and then they did The Force Awakens. Did they ever have the eighth movie as a game before this one? Lego Star <laughs> Wars games. I dropped my phone. So this is Lego Star Wars the let's see, there's there was the Force Awakens. The Skywalker Saga is this one. There's the Complete Saga, which was the prequel and the original, because they also had just the original. And then they had the Star Wars ones, Lego Star Wars 3, the Clone <laughs> Wars, a lot of stuff. So no, I don't think that any of the sequels, aside from Force Awakens, were ever Lego Star Wars. That's interesting. Did that... I review ever... that... Sorry. That's just interesting. I was going to ask if... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask if you had played any of the Lego Star Wars games ever. Yes, I was super into the prequel trilogy, which was the first games they made. And then I played the original trilogy one, too. I played a little bit of one of them once, like... Oh, no. 15-ish years ago? about there I mean, so it must have been the prequels like almost stuff. 20 years ago <laughs> let's well, not um but i've not really played any of the the lego star wars so i don't really know anything about this series honestly other than it's star wars and lego i know my brother-in-law was is pretty ready for this game he was excited i i like the lego star wars games i was kind of disappointed that the later lego games are like added voice acting and stuff i go no the pantomime's like part of the charm yeah, that's always been, like, the Lego, like, shtick, was the, the pantomime slapstick silliness. So, like, based on the trailer of this one, it looks like they, like, redid the the original and prequel to have voice acting. It's not just the pantomime. Because, oh, hmm. like, I mean, I guess it would have been kind of weird, too. It's like, oh, yeah, just the original two games plus some voice acting cutscenes for the other stuff. I don't know. I guess that's a good question that I don't know from looking at the website. Did they remake? Like, is this a brand new Lego covering all nine? Or is it, like, including ports of the original ones with new stuff? I don't... I'm not sure. I I mean... So, the easy thing would be just porting the old stuff. But then, like, there'd be such a jarring difference. So, yeah, I don't know. And I will say this, these screenshots are very pretty. Yeah. I love the way that they pay attention to, like, the wear and, like, the mold lines and all the, like, touches of little Lego-iness like they did in the Lego movie yeah. as well. So, yeah, like, if you enjoy Lego games, you're probably going to enjoy this one. Unless you're, like, you a Lego really... Star Wars purist, then you might hate it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's a... Uh, that's, uh, tomorrow also tomorrow is mlb the show 22 for playstation 4 and 5 uh the xboxes and switch uh baseball game so i'm out i don't i shay would be our person to talk about sports games but is not here this week so i i don't know any i don't know i guess pc Seem- players don't deserve a baseball game i guess unless it's one of those like i don't even know if mlb the show ever it comes to pc 
to begin with. Maybe it's a timed exclusive. I know it's um, That's weird produced to be timed. by Sony. <laughs> yeah, like it's weird that it's on Xbox, then or pub- and Switch. published by Sony, uh, published by PlayStation. That is, PlayStation just so, really hates PCs. <laughs> developed by Sony. A- anyway, yeah, MLB the show. Then um, on seven April, which I wrote Wednesday, but that's Thursday. I don't. I apparently don't know how days work. Uh, on Thursday, that's seven thing as Thursdays of april chrono cross radical dreamers edition coming to playstation 4 xbox one switch and pc which is a weird selection of consoles to release on no it's but just no one likes on. putting stuff on the new generation excuse me my gosh like well, i guess the the only like mild defense to that is you can play playstation 4 games on playstation 5 and you can play xbox one games on the xbox series you know this also gives them a chance to make ps5 and xbox uh series x versions later on yeah for 10 bucks more oh yeah i gotta pay that upgrade fee yeah i don't i mean it's jrpg so (laughs) it's hard for me to get excited for this because it's all like oh it's a chrono trigger uh, sequel except it's not, not really yeah. and it just seems like a lot if it was a 2d game i'd be like oh, i bet Haley would like it but it's a 3d so i don't know maybe she would like it still she might i mean i it's got like 30 something characters you can play as true i was trying to look at the website for like how much are they charging for this? And they don't even say yet. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> Where's... No pre-ordering? I don't see it anywhere on the official... Square Enix website. <clears throat> what is happening? You know what? I'm going to go to the Steam page. Uh, 20 bucks Pre-purchase chrono cross the radical dreamers edition on steam for 20 dollars. so honestly that's that's, at least. that's reasonable yeah that might be, be worth actually picking up and trying it out with well i mean not with Haley because i think it is still single player but yeah it's not like tales although apparently the new tales isn't multiplayer so that's sad tales or like secret of mana or anything like that all right next they should give us chrono trigger again though they won't though so like this, the the concept of this Chrono Cross, uh, like HD re-release kind of thing, though, I'm just like, yeah, let's let's do that. Just up res a few things and sell it for cheap. I'll take that. Well, that and um, the fact that they've included the um, the whatever it was that I don't it know makes it the Radical Dreamers addition because it has that that radical dreamers side story visual novel whatever it is well that's like when they released uh final fantasy 10 and 10 2 on the ps3 and 4 and 5 etc and they added like the in between video and then some like story thing for after 10 2 yeah it's cool that they've included it though Mm mm-hmm um, I got nothing more to say about that. Next, yep. you have the House of the Dead remake. Same for day. Swi- for on Switch. I just threw this on here because I thought it was funny that this is even happening. And it's specifically only coming to Switch. That's all. House of the Dead remake. On what, the is, Switch. what is the House of the Dead? You don't know the House of the Dead? Classic arcade, like, um, similar, like, you know, Time Crisis? No. Do you know what an arcade is, Zyber? Yes, there's one that sells beer nearby. Hmm, I bet they have House of the Dead. They don't. You know Typing of the Dead? Yeah. Uh, Typing of the Dead is just uh, House of the Dead, but with typing. Hmm. So regular House of the Dead is the exact same game, except instead of typing something, you have a light gun that you shoot zombies with. Do you think they could remake the Typing of the Dead for me to play? You can just get Typing of the Dead. I think it's Vaporware at this point. I'm actually going to look that up. I, I bet typing it's on Steam. Typing of the Dead. 
is on Steam for 20 bucks. Yikes. They had a typing of Typing of the Dead Overkill. Oh, there's a Typing of the Dead Overkill collection for 26 bucks. What's what's in the collection? Typing of the I Dead times it's just two. A, it's just a bunch of DLC. Typing of the Dead Overkill came out in 2013. I love that I clicked on this on Steam, and the first screenshot, one of the things that it wants you to type is sexual tyrannosaur. I I'm love seeing that. that. Or the dripping wart goo. Not as good as sexual tyrannosaur. <laughs> there was a, a typing of the dead speed run uh, at GDQ. I think it was like this this uh, AGDQ, maybe. Maybe this past SGDQ recently, which is just hilarious to me. I like another one is May I Eat You? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, thank you. Oh man, I really want this game. It's twenty bucks. That's so much. You could get you could just get um regular House of the Dead remake for Switch instead. Yeah, but like then I can't type them to death. I'm mean, adding it to I... my wish list. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Get that and uh, we'll stream it on Scary Game. Oh, I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear a bunch of typing. Anyways, that's um that's the upcoming releases for this next week. Uh, continuing on the news kick, let's do the weekly bomb, where we come up with news items that came out of roughly in the past week and determine if it was a bomb or the bomb. Well, let me tell you, it's not looking good for most of these. There, it's pretty bomby. Overall, in a in a very um, a bomb kind of way, uh, <clears throat> let's address the very first one, which is the E.G. Ionoma Twitter announcement that Breath of the Wild Two is officially being pushed back to spring of 2023. So it was originally holiday of 2022. Is- or, I mean, yeah. the last one, anyway. <laughs> yeah, the the last date that we had was, quote-unquote, holiday 2022. So now they've officially said, nah, 2022 is not happening. It's going to be 2023. Man, what is <laughs> what is going on with this game? It's like, and, you know, it was nice when we were all like, oh, by the way, Metro Prime 4 is just being started from scratch again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Breath of the Wild 2, though, it's like, what's going on there? It's... I mean, it is a little bit worrying since it's, they seem to be just taking Breath of the Wild assets and making another game around that. So why is it taking so long? If I would have, back when they first said they were working on a sequel to Breath of the Wild, I expected it to be a Majora's Mask type of treatment. Where they just take the, they took the Ocarina stuff and did a really quick turnaround between that and Majora's Mask. It was like, oh. what, three three years, I think, was, was the difference. Yeah, that was kind of what I was hoping for. It's like, all right, you you got the giant overworld. Now let's make an awesome underworld. And then they announced, oh, actually, we're going to make a sky world. I go, okay, well, make an awesome sky world? I I guess. The little bits of footage that they had in this announcement, like video, I don't want to call it a trailer necessarily, but... There was some cool little little things that we saw in there, at least, of what they're developing with, like, Link popping through the ground of the Sky Islands. Seemed interesting. <clears throat> yeah, House of the Link. Uh, typing of the Link. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't really have high hopes for this game, just because I don't really care much for the kind of gameplay and stuff that the first Breath of the Wild has. As so. long as they put in actual like dungeony temple-y type of things because i think that was the big thing that was really missing from breath of the wild was those in-depth uh experiences as opposed to the one-off puzzles that were the shrines yeah or I mean, honestly they... the gimmicky puzzles that even were the um beasts i mean they would also need to change a lot of the reward system basically 
weapons. I, I need more than just, oh, a new weapon that's going to be destroyed after a few swings, or, oh, uh, just another the shrine orb thingy, the too. Orbs, yeah. It's like, yeah. go back to the heart system, have the stamina, I mean, just, yeah, have it where the hearts and stamina are things you find instead of deciding which one do you want to work on. Because you're going to get them all eventually, I mean, basically either way, but having a set actual reward feels more rewarding than having a reward that you then have to Chuck E. Cheese token for something, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, turns out instead of shrines, we have a gotcha machine you put it in now. I don't... Please, I hope Nintendo didn't hear that. <laughs> if Ape Plus... Escape 2 can do it, so can Breath of the <laughs> Wild 2. And, and while I liked Breath of the Wild, on one hand, I liked the whole, like, and here's the only, like, utility items you're going to need for the entire game right here up front. On one hand, I get that from a open world exploration point but on the other hand from a feeling like i am getting more done and feeling like i am advancing it really didn't provide enough so yeah that's another issue at breath of wild like you know there's a lot of people are just like if i want if i see something i want to be able to get there and my thought is if i see something i want to jot down that clearly i need something else to get there and then come back later when i think i have the thing i need yep Yep, I get you. But, I mean, hopefully, this delay is a sign that they're putting care and polish into it, and not a sign that there are troubles with uh, the actual development. Yeah, it could be out. that they just think they need more time to do all the awesome stuff they have ideas for, or is it that they're having a hard Tru time trouble. thinking of ideas? <laughs> or Or they thought of ideas, and now they're, like, stuck on it trying to make it work. Yeah. Find out, I guess. Find out next time on Breath of the Wild 2 announcements. And I think my take on that is going to be it's neither A or V bomb until we find out why it was delayed. Because, you know, if they're, if they're making it... If they're making a good game, then I will wait for it. But if the game is not that great, then I will be... Then see, it's not good. I really hope they come up with a better name than just Breath of the Wild 2 or Breath of the Wild Electric Boogaloo, whatever stuff. Because, you know, this isn't the first sequel to a Zelda game. We don't need assistance to know that it's a sequel. Yeah, the only game that's ever had... We've had plenty of sequels, but the only game that's had like a 2 or anything like that is Zelda 2. Adventure of Link. The rest yeah. of them have... And look how had... well that went. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The rest of them have had their own subtitles, so I hope they come up with something. You know, that actually would be interesting if, you know, they're all like, you know what, Breath of the Wild takes a lot of inspiration. It's based on the first Zelda. What if Breath of the Wild 2 did that for Zelda 2? I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, if they, if they decide to, like, work on a battle system like that, be like, heck yeah. Uh, I will be out. <laughs> No, well, thank well, you. Well, just don't have constant enemies running towards you in a dungeon, and we'll we'll be fine. Yeah, jeez. All right. Um, I got I got nothing more to say about this Zelda announcement. Yeah. What's our next news item, Zyber? Uh, well, let's see here. PlayStation announced a new PlayStation subscription method thing so originally we had the playstation plus which was needed to play online games on the ps4 and 5 and would also net you two to three free games monthly that as long as you had the subscription you could keep playing them forever and then they had ps now which was a streaming slash download service where there is a list of games that you could either stream to your playstation or download and play as long as you had the subscription so they changed that. They're going to combine them, basically, into a tier subscription. So it's just going to be the PlayStation subscription. I don't know what the actual name thing is. It's PlayStation Plus. I is, guess it's it... just PlayStation Plus, yeah. Yeah. So we, we knew this was coming. They've been working on this idea for a couple like months now. But they yeah, just they were now like officially... calling it Codename Spartacus. Spartacus was like such that. a bad name. 
So they did they did the official like announcement of pricing and what the tiers actually include. Yeah, so the initial tier is exactly the same as the PlayStation Plus what it currently is. You got the online play uh downloadable games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage. Uh and that's to my knowledge the same price, 60 bucks yearly. Yeah, that's the same uh 60 Out bucks of... yearly, 10 bucks monthly. That's that's exactly what the base PlayStation Plus already cost. So there's no changes. Yeah. And then if we skip to the like the highest tier, that's the one where well, actually, no. Let's skip to the middle tier. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just work our way up them. <laughs> All right. So middle tier, it's a uh, hundred dollars yearly, which is an additional forty dollars a year, and it gives you the same as the PlayStation Plus tier, but also gives you a catalog of up to four hundred PS4 and PS5 games that you should be able to download and play. So it's basically and... PlayStation Now bundled in with PlayStation Plus, which I don't know what what was the PlayStation Now price yearly before i heard it was 30 dollar or 60 dollars a year sorry not 30 so 60 dollars a year plus you know i think you needed the playstation plus to use it or maybe you didn't i don't i don't know, I, I don't know if they were separate but i whether or not they were separate that's 120 dollars a year previously now 100 dollars a year if it was 60 and 60 Yes. And then you have the highest tier, which gives you all of that. And then as well, it gives you PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PSP games to download and or stream. I don't know. If it might just depend on the game. So that's that's brand new. Like, they had PS3 games on the PS Now they and, like, 20 PS2 games. So depending on what the catalog for the P- PlayStation, PS2, and PSP, that could be, you know, something interesting. And then also you'll have PS3 games that you can stream because the PS3 Still is so can't. strange. No one can figure out how to emulate it's digitally all the games. super weird. <laughs> so instead you'll just stream it to your console. Um, and I was trying to figure out reading this article. Is and there will be like time limited game trials and like some other weird stuff like yeah, that. I was It was this next portion that 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 third dot that's um offers cloud streaming access for uh ps1 ps2 psp ps4 in the extra and premium tiers in markets where playstation now is currently available can stream games using ps4 ps ps5 and pc i was like what does that mean i don't understand I don't I, I don't get that. Do, so you... like the PC part specifically or just in general? Just just that entire little like semi paragraph. Can you explain that? So, so there's some countries that like either the countries don't allow streaming or PlayStation just never set up streaming for those countries. I don't know why the latter would be if it wasn't for the former. I don't know. So apparently they're trying to get some more countries to be able to stream stuff too. Otherwise, for the countries that don't allow streaming or can't have streaming, whichever it is, there's actually going to be a different tier for them where it doesn't include that. So it's going to be like cheaper than oh, okay. the normal that's, price. That's all it is? Yeah. So it doesn't really affect the American market where I am. No. It doesn't affect our market. Not not my market. Ho oh. ho. So anyway, this highest tier is priced at $120 yearly, which we believe is what the PlayStation Plus and PS Now combined were already. So it provides more than what the the two initially combined provided. So it's like, you know, anyone that was already doing PS Now, why wouldn't you do all of this? If you've already felt that it was worth the money, then just keep spending uh-huh. the same amount of money and get more. So yeah. like, we we've you know we've talked about subscription based stuff. We talked about Game Pass and everything. Yeah. So my my thoughts are still basically the same. Of uh, oh, they're adding PlayStation, PS2, and PSP games to this. Maybe they'll allow me to buy them individually instead. <laughs> instead of having to maintain a subscription. Yeah, but if not, like depending on what the catalog is like, Haley and I are already thinking like, oh, we can get like a year of it at some point when we think that there's not going to be a ton of other games to play. And then we can, like, you know, play the PS3 and especially PSP games that 
why would we want to pull out a PSP and play PSP games if we can play it on the PS5 instead kind of thing. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely interested in it. We definitely need to see what the actual catalog is going to be, though. Yeah, I, that's the thing, is it's going to very much hinge on exactly what games they're able to, to offer in the backlog. So there's going to be 400 PS4 and PS5 games. There's only going to be 340 um, all the other console games. Right. Which is less than the PS4 and PS5. So it's all like, well, there's way more (laughs) possible from there. If you're counting PSX, PS2, PSP, and PS3, that's thousands of games. And you're offering 340. I was checking PS Now to see what it currently offers, and of the 20 to 21 PS2 games, I only knew, like, two of them. One of them was Ape Escape 2. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird, though, because, like, the Jack and Daxter games are available digitally to buy on the PS4 and 5. Like, the original PS2 games, not the PS3 ports, I, one, I think. And one must wonder if they're doing, like, 340 games available now, they'll add more later, maybe it's on a rotating schedule, like... Here's the games that are available to play this month, which... Oh, oof, gosh, that would be let's terrible. Let's hope not. No, I... If they did that, then I would just be all like, whoa, why would I want to buy this thing now? Because, like, yeah, you can compare it to the Nintendo Online, but at least, like... I mean, not counting the Plus version of that, the regular Nintendo Online that's still getting more NES and SNES games. Like, I still need that to play Splatoon and Smash Bros. Online. Anyway... The PlayStation 1, like, the low tier that allows me the online play and the free, the two monthly downloadable games, it doesn't include any of that stuff. So why would I pay for the extra stuff? It's just all like, well, I gotta wait for any of the games I actually want to play to be added to it. Yeah, and I, frankly, only care about, at this point, the two monthly downloadable games, which... One, they say two monthly downloadable games. I mean, currently right now, I think it's like three or four or more that you get with regular is, PlayStation Plus. Cause it is three. It's two PS4 games and one PS5 game. Well, so, and occasionally PSVR games are on there a lot, too. That was uh, just a special one-time thing that they had for like more than a month or something like that. It was, it was there, just there were, like... It was a couple months in a row that they had PSVR games on there, too. Yeah, but like it was just... A big list of them. It wasn't like they were saying, "Here's two for this week. Here's two for next week." It was just like uh, eight available for the entire time. Gotcha. And of course, I got all of them. <laughs> I haven't played any of them yet. Yeah, but, but like, yeah, PSVR games. That does raise the question. They're saying specifically two monthly downloadable games. They're not saying if they're PS4 games or PS5 games. They're not, and it is one less game than there was before with there being the three so i mean honestly of the games they have been giving us for of, it's been a bad selection <laughs> they could anyway. easily <laughs> drop one of them and no one would bat an eye <laughs> oh yeah that's right uh the ones for april have been announced and we're getting the the remake of the spongebob game uh, it's okay battle for bikini bottom yeah i'm just like okay i'll add that to my list of games and then not download it. I forget what the other two games are, but they were just because that was the like only apparently one, you one of about. them like runs terribly horribly, <laughs> terribly horribly, mm-hmm. horribly terribly horribly. Uh, overall, I... for for me, honestly, this is sort of like a non-issue. Yeah, it's just I'm, like okay. I've been pl- paying for P- regular PS Plus. I'm going to keep paying for the PS Plus Essential tier, which is no change in cost to me. So it's literally a non-issue for me. This changes nothing about my spending habits. It's amusing how much hatred I've been seeing for this announcement. It's just like, why are you guys so mad? Like, it's better than what initially existed. And it's not Game Pass, but it's not as expensive as Game Pass because they're not promising us the you know day, day one, one games and that's fine because if i want a day one game i'm gonna buy it why would i want to not you know, buy it <laughs> yeah and on top of that again 
if they're not price gouging, they're not like, hey, we, we've changed it and now pay us more. If you don't want to buy it, it's the exact same as it has been for years now. So Yeah, like, in fact, if you only want to play the latest games, the PS4 and PS5, you only need the middle tier, which is now cheaper than if you were already buying PS now. If you were doing both previously, yeah. So, so it's, yeah, like, you, you could be upset that it's not going to compete with Game Pass, but I honestly don't care <laughs> and at this point game pass has the like got their first sort of check mark like feather in their cap like it's gonna be hard to compete with them because they've already been set up for a year now or however long it's been you know i actually saw something people online were complaining about how the ps3 games are only going to be streamable they're all like we think that playstation should put the millions of dollars into like they act literally said millions of dollars into figure out how to get the ps3 games to work in an emulation so that they can download them what's the benefit <laughs> i don't know how... there are people being all like well everyone says that they shouldn't they're just defending playstation uh-huh <laughs> But on the other hand, there are people saying, like, we don't care because we never play older games. Like, they're saying how, like, they would set up the emulations to be able to play a bunch of quote-unquote retro games and then never actually do it. And that kind of just, like, confused me. I'm just like, are you saying that you guys literally never go back to old games and play them or replay them? There's a bunch of people that are exactly like that. And that is the exact market that Game Pass and the higher-tier PlayStation, or the mid-tier at least, like... Why all those people that are constantly trading in used games? They like they're they... trying to say like PS3 games aged poorly, and I'm just like, what the crap are you talking about? PS3 games still look amazing. All games age poorly. <laughs> Eventually, uh, yeah, I don't. There's no, there's no benefit to doing that when they can just stream it and. The only thing that I would argue in general about that is our general take on the um, archiving and game history and preserving preserving games. The streaming is not going to do that. Yeah, in which case it's all like, yeah, I'd totally understand if PS3 games could naturally be downloaded onto a not PS3, but because of how different the ps3 processor and everything was and how it's just hard to do i'm just like eh, yeah whatever i don't expect them to throw a crap ton of money into doing that then yeah. well i guess i you've kind of swung me around from i don't really care to this is kind of the bomb because it is <laughs> for the people that this is for which is not me it is a better deal so mm-hmm. could be worse therefore it's good yeah, like the only thing concerning to me is just, is the catalog actually going to be good? And we'll find out. And like, it's already going to be better than the existing catalog. Who knows, maybe PS Now sucks so terribly and such, and so people are really hoping that this would be a lot better. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And it's only slightly better to them. Yeah. But I don't know anything it, about PS Now because I don't buy into that. So You could play Sonic Adventure on it i already own that at least twice i think so but now you can play it on the ps4 or 5 uh let's move on to our, our last of the weekly bomb because i believe this was just today as we're recording that uh e3 this year was canceled entirely no digital no live nothing no e3 this year Yes, apparently they decided to use this time to work on next year's physical E3. Yeah, so the, they, as this article from IGN has it here, um, the ESA did reach out and say that they are planning to have a in-person live event in 2023, but nothing this year. And I look at that and I go, are you though? <laughs> yeah because there's already been so many rumblings about is e3 even relevant anymore with you know the nintendo directs the state of plays i mean microsoft doesn't really do anything honestly but 
But maybe they would, I mean, they would at least have a digital thing once a year just to keep up with people, probably. But... Yeah, just for something. But in general, like, I get not necessarily doing the digital events as much as the digital, like, as much as E3 in general is sort of quote-unquote gamer Christmas, as, as Shay would put it. I, I get just not having it and putting the onus on each of the individual companies, Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft and et cetera, to do their own digital events because digital events are kind of easy to do compared to in-person live events. I wonder what E3, you know, necessarily did last year. Like, what, what did it take for them to set up the digital event, everything and such? Because, like, you know, E3... It's still a lot for, you know, the stockholders, everything like that. It's like, what are the companies doing to keep investors happy? Um, but, like, that was a lot easier to do when it was a physical setup. Yeah, I mean, E3 uh, in general has struggled with relevance now for 10, 15 years to a degree. As we keep seeing the, the back and forth over... Oh, only industry guests. Oh, no, wait, anybody can come. Wait, no, only industry guests. Wait, no, we're not making money, so anybody again. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe eventually they will just be a video game conference that might have game announcements at them. I mean, that's kind of what it has been. What? Yeah, my, might is the key word here, though. Like... The video game companies still think like yes this is definitely the right time to make a bunch of huge announcements well that's just because there's been inertia behind the event for so long back whenever it, it was like the yearly in person big reveal before a lot of these Nintendo Directs and State of Play style announcements really took off now that that's a thing that people expect to happen outside of E3 what is the remaining relevance to E3? It's Ow. still a lot of fun having pain, apparently. Yeah, punching my it's mic. It's a lot of fun having a, you know, a theater full of audience members. Like, how on earth would we otherwise have such great moments like the blizzards, don't you have a phone and such? What? Don't you people have phones? Wow, what, a, what uh, an experience. It's just so much fun seeing audience members reactions to things oh boy anthony needs to sneeze oh I, maybe it, it you you talked about it and it ran away and now it's just a tickle in my nose this is the worst You're supposed to look up at the lights but you gotta have the right kind of light that light does not help oh well it's just a curse on you now you'll for, forever have the tickle the I, mm. the, the dig tickle um, speaking of in-person events, this is not necessarily a, a, a weekly bomb, but it was something I thought of. Um, GDQ is, AGDQ, or SGDQ that is, because it's in summer, is actually going to be an in-person event again this year. That is really exciting, because once again, crowds. you gotta have the crowds, you gotta have the couch commentators right there. Uh, yeah, I'm... You gotta have the couch randomly break and then people just come in with a new couch out of nowhere. And then someone takes a step on stage and the NES resets in the middle of a race. and uh, it, it's, it's, it's just... That, there's that thing, like you said, uh, having the crowd. I get you now with the E3 because I'm excited for, yeah. a, for GDQ to have a live crowd. Like going to different concerts and stuff the music is just different live in in the crowd yeah. I, I get that so like also when gdq was done digitally and stuff and anything you know broke it was just uh suddenly all right just gotta wait until we're back on screen instead of you know still having the audience there to yeah or or do a wave or something the troubleshooting in general of Something broken, we don't know what, because we're completely on opposite sides of the planet. One thing I yeah. did like about the digital GDQ events is the fact that they were able to do some of the more um, non speedrunny showcase type stuff, like the different um, dance games and whatnot, because it's just easier oh, yeah. to do that stuff. It was you. cool seeing a Beat Saber set up like, with a person... 
like yeah. having a camera view of the person and the game actually around them through the camera yeah yeah so i'm I'm hoping that they're gonna find a way to do like a, a hybrid presentation where they have the stage presentations but occasionally they're able to do things that are also just digital such as those different showcases where the fact that it was yeah. a digital event meant that certain people who couldn't fly to america to present were still able to participate in GDQ during the digital time. So I, I, I hope they're they're able to hybrid uh, hybrid presentation for GDQ. And who, yeah. I also hope that they go back to the old timer. I didn't like this past. Yeah, time. I mean, they they did work with power up audio and all of that kind of stuff, and I get that. But I liked the old timer too. Give me that binary timer. Yeah. So uh, yeah, E three. <laughs> Not as exciting as GDQ, apparently. <laughs> well, no. GDQ is all the fun games that I've enjoyed. And E3 is, oh, let's see if I'm going to enjoy any of these games coming out. Yeah, it's just part of the hype cycle that you know I'm pretty done with. Speaking of uh, fun games that you've enjoyed... Ow, when did I scratch myself? Stop. Stop forcing yourself to be in pain. I don't know. Uh, speaking of games that you've enjoyed, uh, have you played anything uh, for... Dun, 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 minish Recap barely <laughs> barely barely uh so i've had a craving to replay fall fantasy 10 and 12 and such and so i played 10 like two months ago and then now i finally restarted 12 the zodiac edition the ps4 version playing on the ps5 of course uh what's not What's nice about this edition is that it has a times four speed you can enable. Oh, good. So it is oh, so good. hilarious seeing people just go wah, 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 forward. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I only have to ever really have to turn that off when like I need to be at a specific spot to interact with something, or if like I'm actually fighting something tough and have to focus on what I'm doing. Yeah. But like, oh right, I I get to grind without actually grinding it's just i just kill everything that comes in front of me because it doesn't feel like a chore yeah the um bravely default style just fast forward auto battle type stuff uh, really default is nice because i would just get overpowered and then skip through a dungeon yep. and then repeat yep <laughs> uh anyway so final fantasy 12 i actually really liked the game even the original game i know a lot of people had issues with what they thought was a boring story and characters and such. Hey guys, Vaughn's not the main character. No, he's, he's the he's you don't, the viewpoint. You don't even have to play as him. You just get to see his butt whenever you're in a town. Sadly, yeah, he's he may be the, like the viewpoint protagonist, but he is not the main character of the story. I never no, beat the game, but... and I know that. Good, yeah. And like playing this, I'm just like, man, I miss having like a ragtag team of people that didn't necessarily all know each other. I mean, technically, Final Fantasy 13 has that as well, but they all get together right at the beginning compared to then they split you know, up again. 12 or the older games. Yeah. So that's... that's kind of what I'm hoping for with 16. It's like, give me just random characters that aren't all royalty are... or best friends already. Yeah, like road tripping best bros. I mean,. 15 it was great but it's like all right i don't need that for the next game it's like i got it from here we're good shake it up yeah you can be people so all people who came together and listened to limp biscuit i'm still sad <laughs> that they didn't do more with that in that game that that's like he pulls out his phone twice throughout the game and the first one like he doesn't even or the second one he doesn't even play anything off of it it's like no give me more limp biscuit <laughs> Give me more cringe. Square Enix, all I want is Limp Biscuit in my Final Fantasy games. Give me more Stranger of Par Give me more Strange in the Stranger of Paradise. <laughs> anyway, back to 12. Um, also, a big difference for the Zodiac Edition compared to the original is that the original game, like, you had a license board where every character can learn everything, every magic, every technique, every weapon, etc. Yeah. And Zodiac Edition, they s switched it out so that there's 12 different jobs where they have all those boards, you know, in those jobs. So, like, you got the White Mage that just has Healing. White Mage magic, a few a few support green magic, etc. They have crap strength, and then so on. 
And so, like, initially I was like, oh, man, I like having everyone just having everything, though. But, like, I've been focusing on, like, looking up what are good job combinations because you eventually have, each character can have two of those jobs. And so I am kind of enjoying it more. I'm having characters do more than what they used to. Also, in the original game, I only ever used three characters of the six because, like, you have to use them to have them get experience so i would have like three at like 70 something <clears throat> level and three at 12 <laughs> <laughs> and so i'm just like okay yeah i'll actually use them all because they all have different classes and are useful for things and so now it's kind of good because if one dies i can just switch them out for another one and they're not extremely under leveled helpful so that's what i've been doing i've played like a few hours worth but because of that times four it's got me decently into the game uh, yeah a, a few hours worth but it's actually like uh four, four times as many hours i don't know why but obviously four times is that's how that works it was so good so what have you been playing? i played four different games huh we got a theme um i went over to a friend's house uh this <clears throat> earlier monday i don't know earlier this week doesn't matter Went over and we sat together and played some games. We played What the Golf, which is hilarious. A great couch multiplayer party game. Is that the thing where, like, sometimes you're hitting a ball, sometimes you're hitting other stuff yeah. and weird things? Yeah, it's, it's that one where sometimes you're hitting it, sometimes you're just moving it. But the whole point is to get whatever you are, whether it's a ball or a, an office chair or, or a, a remote control car. You have to get it to a flag that is the quote-unquote hole before okay. your opponent does. And then there's a, a final head-to-head -head where you're trying to kill them. <clears throat> and the amount of health that either of you have is how many victories you had as you were going through the rest of the courses. It's pretty fun. I had a good time. Um, my favorite part of it was sitting down while they had been playing for a while. And I just sat down and trounced them immediately upon picking up the controller and they were very angry because i i'm just able to because you're, you're fresh yeah i'm just able to pick up like oh this is how this game works cool and they're like oh, i couldn't figure that one out and i was like well i mean video games and i play a lot of them i don't know what to tell you but that's always fun uh we also threw in donkey kong country tropical freeze i did not love it so yeah, there was a time where my friend and I, like, we played Rayman Origins and Legends. We're all like, is there any other, like, co-op platform games that are fun? Tropical Freeze sucks co-op. It was bad co-op. Like, and on, like on... I'm not going to talk about a single player. Single player is probably fine. But co-op is all like, oh, well, you got to have one player not do anything in order to have the most best movement. <laughs> well, then why are there two of us? Yeah. And even then, like, a lot of the controls just felt not clean, almost. And I don't know if that's because there were two of us on screen or, or what. It could be. Because, like, it's practically a girlfriend mode kind of thing, but not girlfriend mode. Whatever partner mode, whatever that's supposed to be. Little sibling yeah, mode. The, yeah, I, I, I always think of it as, like, the, the little, little sibling or... or uh, young kid you know like it's like donkey kong is the main character who cares about the other kong that's with him here's here, here's a controller jimmy yeah you're definitely playing with me except now donkey kong can't move as well because he doesn't have a jetpack person on his back or something yeah. it's so stupid or you have to um properly do the whole roll jump except that there's weird hiccups so you lose all of your momentum when you go to jump because you came out of the roll and, and jumped a frame too late and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't having fun. It's just so sad going from Rayman Origins of Legends and being all like, can there be any game to compete with this? No? Speaking, sad. speaking of good games to compete, played Sonic Team Racing and the Mario Kart 8 new tracks. Um, the new tracks, I mean it's Mario Kart, whatever. They're, they were fine. But Sonic Team Racing, I had never actually played it before. That, so that was an interesting experience. It's definitely way more fun in team mode than it is in, like, rally mode. So is team mode, or it's team racing, is that the latest Sonic racing game? Yeah, that's the one that, that just was on the PlayStation, on PlayStation free Plus. game. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I, I'm going to play more of it. I liked it. 
yeah, I need to play that at some point. So what is, what is the team racing involved? So the, you, you, you race in teams of three, and your individual placement goes into a then team placement, which is then your actual if you win or lose. And okay. it has a, they call it slingshotting, but it's it's drafting, where the person in the lead of the team leads a trail behind, and the rest of the team members can drive in that trail to generate boost, leave the trail to go forward, then they become in front, so the next person can drive in their trail and boost, so that you're constantly boosting off of each other and like properly drafting and stuff. Oh man, that sounds... It- it's pretty cool. Sounds like I need to rely on my teammates too much. <laughs> it's pretty cool when it works, but also a lot of the time it kind of just ends up being I'm in the lead, and I'm so far in the lead that it doesn't matter. And now yeah. I came in first, and my rumor that I was playing with came in second, and then the NPC that was on our team came in ninth, so we lost. Cool, thanks. I'm that, glad that I have this NPC on my team. Yeah, that reminds me of the Fall Guys has a mode like that where you're on like teams of four or something like that. And so it's the same thing of it's not just based on if you get there before everyone else, like it's the, full. the four of you combined have to get there before the other team's combined points. Which is like interesting. It's a cool way to be able to play with friends. But when I was playing by myself with three randos, it took like five tries just to get past the first round when I was usually one of the first people through. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I would play more of that. I th- I, um, <clears throat> I think it has an online mode, so maybe we can play together at some point. Maybe. And then the last game was I got bullied into buying Project Zomboid, which is a very in-depth sis- like system-heavy zombie survival thing. Which you might want to look into, Zyber, since I know you like... I'm looking up Yeah, right there now. you go. Um, so, so did you get... like? I picked it up on Steam and played a little bit of it just to learn how the systems work, but I'm looking forward to trying more of it because it's one of those like designed for Survival Sunday style survival games where it's like build... That's what I was thinking. Build yeah. your own story type of uh, interactions. There's no actual end goal. It's just survive as long as you can until you die. Yeah, it's only fifteen fifty. That's yeah, pretty good price. cheap too. Uh, those are the games I played this week. So a little bit more than you did, but yes. Well, I <laughs> I've been so busy. It's, I really want to have more time to play. Haley's been on spring spring break. She's a teacher, so. She's been enjoying herself a bit more, at least. There's that, at least. She's still playing Triangle Strategy. Oh, she's no. on her second. She's on her second playthrough too, because there's like choices you can do that will divert the story. And so she's doing second playthrough of seeing the different story options, and then the third playthrough she's gonna do the like perfect route to where you get the best ending. Cool. Well, she only missed by two, technically one choice, and also she burned a house down that she. <laughs> Um, (laughs) what? (laughs) Alright, so there's there's a point where it's like, alright, you can either give up this character or you have to defend him by defending your town, basically. And so the tactician of the group is all like, I'd rather give him up, but if you vote to defend him instead, he's like, ugh, fine, I guess we'll just set the houses on fire as like a strategy during the battle. And so if you don't actually set any of the houses on fire, you can get the perfect ending later on, but she accidentally set accidentally the on fire committed arson because she sent an enemy into like the trigger for it, and so it set the house on fire. <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. And at that point, it wasn't worth like restarting the level or anything. I love that the tacticians all like, uh, oh, "We're we're no we're not going to be able to defend the town." I know we'll burn, just the burn town. it to the ground. If I if I can't defend the town, I'll be the one to destroy it. Yeah. With scorched earth policy right there. It's like, hey, this wasn't my choice. I wanted to give the guy up. You're the guys wanting to burn down the town. You went, you're, what? <laughs> I guess I did play some uh, Tunic as well last, this past week, which 
Yeah, I saw that you were like streaming on Tuesday, yep, weren't you? I was. It's fun. I do. I started a new file. I haven't finished my first playthrough still, but I started a new file just for the stream to be able to watch it from the beginning. And I got in in like the the three ish three to four hours that I played, I got almost to the point that I was in my casual one, which I, is double the time that it took me. So I technically already shaved off half of my uh, playtime for the quote-unquote speed run, but I also wasn't really nice. speed running. I was just playing. Um, but I am kind of pretty interested in try maybe trying to sit down and route out and learn a speed run of that, because it is very fun. I definitely recommend it. Oh, you should do it. I picked up the sword that's how far i've gone because i usually just pick it up when i'm waiting to like do a meeting on my computer or something so you got now you picked up the sword or the stick the sword okay so you got to like it's it's about it's actually fun now because you have an actual weapon yeah i'm all like hey i can actually go to places that bushes wouldn't allow me to yep and i did notice uh, the first the first time i had been playing through i was like oh I feel like you could go backwards through a lot of these places. So I tried doing that on this playthrough, and it was a lot of like, oh, that gate only opens from the route that I'm supposed to go. So it is... Yeah. The the progression is much more developer-intended than I initially uh, anticipated. Well, you'll but. just have to figure out which ones don't have a gate waiting for you. Yeah, sitting down and doing like the different routing and figuring out when to collect what items is going to be a large Let's part start of gatekeepers. Yep. Yep, tunic's good. Product Zomboid for Survival Sunday slash scary game, whatever. Yeah, we should play Sonic Team Racing together. That's Minish Recap. Where we recapped things. Definitely not Minish. Minishly. No, uh, that was a good one. Um, tell us the scale on the website, and we'll see you on the Discord. Link in the description below. Time, time for the post show. Woo, post show. <laughs>